Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Do you think they didn't know what they are doing to Jesus Christ? They knew very well. Probably you can say Pilate was a little confused because he has already heard from instruction, heard the instruction from his wife and he, they couldn't prove that he was guilty. So out of fear, in order to pacify people, he handed over Jesus Christ to be crucified. Now this beautiful word comes out of the mouth of Jesus Christ, our Savior, was a powerful word that changed people's life. In what way? Usually, the people who were crucified on the cross used to cry out, shout, sometimes curse people who were standing before them. Sometimes, if people come near, if the soldier come near, they will spit on the people. And they will use all kinds of French and German. Now we see Jesus Christ surrendering completely to the will of God. On the other hand, he was forgiving people. Now the beautiful thing about this particular verse is that it's not that Jesus uttered it once and stopped with that. He didn't say it once because in Matthew we have a particular verb. In Greek we have what we call imperfect tense, that is past continuous. What St. Matthew is trying to tell us is that Jesus did not just say this word once but he kept on saying. He kept on saying, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. So when they nailed on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. When they mocked at him, he said, Father, forgive them. When they ridiculed him, he said, Father, forgive them. Why? He knew very well that God's anger is upon them. Just imagine, Father God is looking at Jesus Christ. He's being nailed. And he was crying, pain and agony. And people were laughing at him. Any father, any mother would have definitely, will get angry when the children are being persecuted in front of their eyes. And Father God was looking at Jesus, his own son, suffering in the hands of human beings. Jesus knew very well, God is getting angry. The wrath of God is upon them. So, as a person who came down to save all the people around the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, Father, forgive them. So he kept on saying that. He taught about forgiveness and he included that in the Lord's Prayer. And he clearly send, said, unless you forgive, your sins will not be forgiven. So what he had taught about forgiveness, now he is practicing. He was forgiving all the people around him. Particularly the people who were persecuting him or treating him badly. Now, we too are called to practice forgiveness in our personal life too. There is a beautiful story about uh, George the Fourth, the king. King George IV was participating in a Holy Communion service and he was about to go to the altar to receive the Holy Communion. One young servant of him came with an urgent news and held on to the hand of the king and he was about to say, convey an important news. Probably that was an urgent news that he wanted to convey to the king. But the king got angry. He pushed his hand and scolded the servant. 
then when uh, the bishop was looking at him, the king said, you can proceed and went and knelt at the altar. You know what the bishop did? He didn't give him communion. He didn't give the wafer to him. And he called the servant. When he came near, he asked the king, apologize to him. You cannot take this communion with this hurt feeling of your servant. You reconcile first with him. Then you take part in communion. So the Bishop of, uh, Archbishop of Canterbury was bold enough to rebuke the king because he knew the importance of forgiveness. He knew that it's not just reconciling with God, having fellowship with God, you are having fellowship with other people when you, when you participate in the Holy Communion. Forgiveness is very, very important. Now what I would like to share with you is that Jesus continues to offer the prayer even now looking at you. You want the proof text? That's what we read in Romans chapter 8 verse 34. You think just Jesus Christ is just sitting on the right hand of God doing nothing? No, this Bible verse tells us who is at the right hand of God who indeed is interceding for us. He not only said, Father, forgive them, they know, know not what they do. Even now, when you make mistake, when you do something that is not pleasing in the sight of God, Jesus Christ pleads for you. Father, forgive them. They are my child. They accepted me. But still they are weak. They are just human beings. They are dust. Forgive them, Lord. Forgive them. I want them to be in my place. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as people who have received the forgiveness from God, we are called to forgive other people. Someone said, if you don't forgive other people, it's like carrying them on your shoulder. You can carry the people on your shoulder all the time. See, forgiving other people will make you to experience the peace of God. You may think taking revenge is something good. No. Because God says, vengeance is mine. Vengeance is mine. You don't do anything. I will take care of them. All that he expects us is to forgive other people. Now all that I want you to do today, as you sit in this holy place, just keep a moment of silence and ask God to show you any person whom you have to forgive. It could be your own family members. It could be other people who are working along with you. Or it could be your, your own relatives. Could be your very close friend or it hurt you. Forgive them, forgive them. Let's keep a moment of silence. What is so good about Good Friday? Yes, it is good for the rebellious souls. Because Jesus is still asking forgiveness. Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. Whenever we commit sin against God, He is interceding for us.